Well, joining me now, the Conservative MP, Anthony Brown, member of the Treasury Select Committee, and also joining us, the Labour MP, Abana Opong Asari, who's the Shadow Exchequer Secretary to the Treasury. Anthony Brown, if this is a once-in-a-century pandemic, what is the need to start taxing people so soon to reduce debt? We've been taking uh, evidence about this at the Treasury Select Committee, and I have to say there's a unanimous agreement that actually we will need to raise taxes at some point, but we shouldn't do it until the economy starts growing again. And I think, uh, you know, there's, there could be some small rises or whatever, but they, we absolutely need to start paying uh, some fiscal contraction, as you call it. We need to balance the books. We need to start living within our means as a country. But until the economy recovers fully, we don't need to do it. Right, but, I mean, if this is comparable to... The Second World War, where debt levels were much higher than they are now, and it took a long time to repay, what's the rush? Well, I, I agree. The, the, I think, and I, we have to wait till uh, the, the budget to see what the Chancellor says, but I think what, what is needed is a roadmap to balance the country's books, but we don't need to pay off uh, the national debt that we've built up uh, during the pandemic immediately. It's a so-called war debt. You compared it to the Second World War. It takes a long time to pay off. We don't know yet what the structural budget deficit is. That's the difference between income and spending that will result when, it, when the economy starts growing again. Uh, until we do that, we don't know how much taxes will need to rise. We will need to balance the, the, the books eventually. We've got to restore a reputation for sound finance that the UK has very proudly and it makes it it's good for the economy in the long term. But there's no need to do it immediately while we're still in the middle of this pandemic. Uh, Aben Opong Asari, um, in this bizarre political cross-dressing, here we have a Conservative MP arguing potentially for tax rises on business and Labour saying, no, you mustn't tax very profitable businesses who've made hundreds of millions of pounds in the last year. Um, good evening. Um, so just to be very clear, what we're saying is now is not the time for the immediate tax rises. And it's not just Labour that's saying that. That's also international organisations like the IMF and the OECD are saying this as well. Um, we feel that the government has got this argument, um, got this really wrong. Um, and if there is a plan to put corporation tax up across Parliament, then of course Labour would look at that. Um, we are aware that the UK's corporation tax is lower than in similar countries, and Labour's long said that we must be in line with them. But I have to say that when I'm speaking to businesses up and down the country, and also in my constituency, the biggest problem for them is not the level of corporation tax, it's looming business rates and bills and wondering how they're going to cope with high levels of debt. And we've just seen that being discussed yeah. in the footage that but, you've just shown. But on shown corporation tax, ago. corporation tax is a tax on profits. Are you really saying a company like Tesco, which has made hundreds of millions of pounds uh, over the last year, um, shouldn't pay any more corporation tax? That it shouldn't go to 21%, 22%? We're not saying that. What we are oh, saying are. is that the government... No, what we're saying is that the, that the government should immediately be looking at how we can move the economy up um, really quickly. The corporation tax is not a thing that businesses and families are saying that are immediately on their mind. And also, in addition to that, I also want to talk about the fact that the government is also looking at increasing council tax. It's not just corporation tax they're talking about. It's council tax rises that are going to hit the pockets of um, ordinary people um, who are already struggling because they've had cuts to universal credit and pay freeze. And, and one of the things that we're particularly concerned about is that we feel that he is threatening and um, that he's doing this so he can hike the taxes now so he can cut them before the general before the next election this is something he refused to deny this morning when Anthony he was Brown, that would be it. very cynical wouldn't it to raise taxes now well, and then cut them before the election well absolutely i mean as i said there's the, the we need to make sure the economy rebounds strongly. It's We're just getting out of this pandemic. Hopefully, we'll be out of it by the summer fully, and business need to get going again. We do need to raise taxes. But as I said at the beginning, I don't think, and the Treasury Select Committee, the, all the evidence we have from it, we don't think you need to do it immediately. You may you raise the issue of corporation tax. The, the government has a manifesto commitment not to raise the main taxes on individuals, income tax and uh, national insurance, as well as value-added tax when you buy goods. Those are set in the... Uh, 
Uh, the rates are set in the election manifesto not to go up. Uh, corporation tax is a big revenue earner. As you pointed out, it's paid by companies that are profitable. We have one of the lowest in the industrial world, far below the international average. And so uh, you probably can increase it a bit in a by a moderate amount without actually damaging the economy But too if you much. look at America, um, where they've already spent $4 trillion on their response, on their rescue response, they're now going to spend almost another $2 trillion. It dwarfs anything Britain is spending, even though we're heading for £300 billion. Pounds. Why, why aren't we able to think big like that? I mean, you know, we're projected well, to have one of the still... slowest recoveries in the I world think... by the OECD. Why don't we do something similar? OK, I think one of the few things almost everyone agrees on is that we have thought big about this in, in the UK. Not as big as them. Um, the American economy is about six times bigger than the UK economy, so you'd expect their support package yeah, to be... Yeah, and they're spending six bigger. trillion um, to our 300 billion. <laughs> The, the um, 300 billion is an absolutely unprecedented amount of support. And uh, I think most businesses, not, not a lot of businesses have suffered, not every business has been able to be saved, but a lot of them, I get it as a, as a constituency MP, are incredibly grateful for the support they've had. And they wouldn't have been able to pull through without the support from the government. But it has meant that we now have, uh, as you said, the highest uh, national debt since the 1960s. And at some point, uh, we have to balance the books and live within our means as a country again. Abena Opongasari, I mean, why isn't Labour calling for the same kind of measures that Joe Biden is doing in America? Firstly, I just want to say that um, the US and the UK are very different economies. So it's really hard to make direct comparisons. But one thing that Labour has been very clear um, is that we need the budget to be focused on securing our economy um, and putting us back onto a path of growth. So do you want a massive After, fiscal uh, stimulus or not? Sorry, as you mentioned, we've had the worst economic crisis of any yeah, major I'm asking economy. you about fiscal stimulus. What I'm saying is that it's very difficult for us to compare the UK to the US. But what we are saying is that we have put forward proposals to the government, which is the Chancellor should bring forward 30 billion capital spending that he has already planned for. And, and that should be accelerated in the next 18 months okay. um, when it's most needed. This is this is the best path forward. Mm -hmm. And what that would do is it will create an extra 400,000 new jobs, which we desperately okay, need. OK, well, we'll, we'll get on to all of those sorts of ideas later on in the week. Thank you both very much indeed for joining us. Abhinav Opongasari and Anthony Brown.